Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For the past few years, researchers in UVM's Extension Center for Sustainable Agriculture have been exploring uses for sheep's wool. The market value of raw wool is low, so for most sheep farmers, wool has become a cost rather than a revenue source. But the UVM researchers are exploring an idea that could make wool a value-added product. Here's Rebecca Gollan with a story. When fall rolls around and the temperatures drop, Vermonters reach for their coziest wool blankets. This summer, though, some residents found a very different use for the warm textile. I mean, any time a sheep gets into, you know, falls into water or whatever, and you're trying to pull her out, you realize that she's like 200 pounds more um, than what she should be. But um, so I knew that the wool held water that way. Albert Wilde is visiting from Utah, where he and his family run a ranch with sheep and beef cows. He's in Vermont to share information with researchers and farmers about the innovative way he's come up with to use wool. My wife had asked if there was a way that I could come up with trying to hold water or make it so she would water her plants less. And so I went and got some of the waste wool that we had around our farm and I put it in around her plants. And at first she was like, what have you done? But then it worked so well that she's like, hey, that really worked. And we were able to go on vacation and come home uh, seven days later and her plants still looked great, which in Utah, that was a big deal. Wilde eventually devised a way to turn the raw wool into pellets that can be added to soil as an amendment. He worked with researchers at Utah State University throughout the process, doing trials about how much water the pellets held and how much fertilizer value they have. Those studies had some surprising results. It was feeding the plants on day one, so it was starting to feed the plants way before most organic fertilizers um, do, which is typically they have a lag time of 45 days, and so day one here this was available. In fact, the trials that we did with the tomato plants reduced the plants from 76 days to be market ready to go into a store to 38 days. So a half a time. You know, that, that was a huge surprise for all of us involved. We have wool is a considered a waste product now because it costs so much for farmers to actually... Kimberly Hagen works at the University of Vermont Center for Sustainable Agriculture. She also raises sheep herself, so she knows the issues involved in dealing with fleece, the plentiful and often valueless byproduct. For the most part, it really goes out in the woods, out on the back 40. Um, if you have a couple of really nice ones, the, there is the wool pool, um, and they do a fleece sale every year. The Vermont Sheep and Goat Association does a fleece sale. So if you do have a couple of really nice ones, you could put it up for sale if you wanted to. But it is a bit of effort. But most people, I would say, if it's worth their time, they will drive it to the wool pool but it doesn't quite pay even for the full cost. Hagen and colleagues from UVM and the Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets were working on a feasibility study of value-added products made with wool when they heard about the pellets. One major advantage is that the pellets are a low phosphorus fertilizer, so there is no nutrient runoff into waterways, a crucial concern for Vermont's overloaded system. It jumped out at me immediately when I saw the the um, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, that it was strong nitrogen and zero phosphorus with a little potassium. The researchers enlisted several farmers around the state to give the pellets a try. Because we were so limited with funds, um, we chose four farmers with four different soil types in four different parts of the state. And they're all using it on their broccoli crop and they, um, they're growing a 100-foot row of broccoli alongside a 100-foot row with their usual um, uh, soil amendment uh, fertilizer. Prior to planting, I went in with the, uh, the wool pellets as well as some peanut meal, which we use as a, as a base fertilizer, and uh, no fertilizer. So we had the three different plots in the same bed of uh, broccoli, uh, and, um, and that's the basis of the experiment. It hasn't been a whole season yet, so farmer Will Stevens is still waiting to see what the results will be. Early on, uh, we, th we think we saw a little bit of a jump in the 100 feet of uh, wool pellet 
uh, trial, um, but then uh, it seemed as though things evened out. And right now we are um, probably six weeks or so into plant growth. So we're not quite to harvest, um, we're getting close. But, um, but right now, uh, it's hard to say that I can see a difference. It's, it's all, it's pretty flat across the bed uh, from both the controls, the peanut meal, and the, and the wool pellets. So I'm, but I'm, I'm eager to see kind of what happens with harvest, uh, whether or not you know, things ripen at the same time. I'm interested to see uh, what the root growth looks like. Maybe we can pull some plants uh, in the bed uh, along the way and see if there's something going on under the soil that we can't see on top. The hardest part of, of trying to use wool is you know, being able to apply it. For sheep farmers, having a market for their otherwise unusable wool could have a major impact. We have quite a bit of wool that's sitting in, in bags and we're unsure what to do with it. Sammy Abdelfita and Anna Bolin have a small, diversified farm in Randolph where they raise sheep and cows. They're here looking for different ways to use their stores of wool. We've been trying to sell it, but um, it hasn't really been working for us. So right now it's just in storage, <laughs> just trying, like Anna just said, trying to find a use for it. And we could send it to a mill, um, but that's pretty costly. Um, uh, we could try to process it ourselves, but it's a pretty, you know, detailed process and involves a lot of time. So, yeah. So uh, another another way to, to use it effectively would, would be really great. The difference for the sheep farmer between having to throw wool away and getting, you know, maybe a dollar or two per pound on that wool which otherwise is a waste product, wool that's not good enough to turn into a textile of any kind, um, can actually make the difference for them in um, cash flowing, like in making a, a profitable enterprise. It's the small things sometimes that you need to do multiple small things in an operation. It's a simple idea that could make sense for Vermont. These researchers will have some answers soon from their small sample of trials. If the results are positive, they'll move on to larger studies. And if that data shows promise, these farmers are ready. In Shelburne, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Very interesting research. We'll keep you up to date when the trial results become available. A wool blanket is one sign of fall. Another is apple season. For some quick and easy apple recipes, we're heading to the Hackett's Family Orchard in South Hero. Here's Deb Plumley. Cooking with apples is my favorite across the fence segment, and I have some favorites to share with you all today. Let's start your day off right with some apple cider pancakes. You take your basic pancake batter and you add to it some cinnamon, some apple cider, and some buttermilk as the liquid. It's really important when you make pancakes that when you whisk the dry ingredients into the wet, you don't over mix. You just want to incorporate until the batter is blended. So then you cook your pancakes on a griddle, turning them, serve them toasty warm. You can drizzle on some maple syrup or try this recipe, and we'll just spoon some out here for apple chunks that are sauteed in cider, butter, a little bit of brown sugar, and cinnamon. Doesn't that look like a great way to start your day? So moving on, I do a lot of searching on the web, and one of my favorite websites is King Arthur Flour. And this apple nut bread pudding is from their website, and it's a lovely and comforting dessert. You take your cubes of stale bread, mix in cream. This uses actually a boiled cider concentrate to give you a burst of apple flavor. If you don't have that, you can use apple juice concentrate. You're going to fold in your diced apples, dried raisins. I use dried cranberries. In this case, cream, eggs, the usual ingredients, and you're going to bake this for about 25 to 30 minutes. You want to bake it until all the liquid has cooked in and the pudding is set. And you can serve this warm, or if you would like, make it ahead of time and just reheat it. It's wonderful as is, or you could certainly add some more maple syrup to it, or perhaps some whipped cream. Now, it's not all about desserts for cooking with apples. 
And this fall autumn salad has just the flavors that you're looking for. I use grilled chicken breasts cut up. I find grilled chicken breast has a little bit more flavor than poached chicken breast. And then I've got diced celery. You've got your apples in here, of course. I use the dried cranberries, a little touch of red onion, and then some mayonnaise. Salt and pepper to soup, as you like it. And I put a dash of paprika on the top. And this is one of these things you can make ahead, put it in the refrigerator. You may find as the flavors sit for a little while, it becomes all that much more flavorful. And this is good just as is in the bowl or you can put it on a bed of lettuce, or maybe even wrap it up in a pita for a yummy salad. And that just has all the flavors of apples built into it. Now the last recipe I have to share comes from a viewer, Robert Corliss of Rutland, Vermont. And these are maple apple streusel muffins. And they have all the great flavors of Vermont with maple syrup and apples. So the base for the muffin is hearty. It has a cup of maple syrup. It's got a generous amount of oatmeal. And of course, your diced apples, some cinnamon. When you put that in the muffin cups, then you're going to top it with a streusel, which is brown sugar, butter, oatmeal, some cinnamon. When these are baking, your kitchen is going to smell wonderful. Now, Robert says that these are great any time of year. I think they'd be good for breakfast, they'd be good for an afternoon snack. I have to say it made 19, and if you count them, you can see that we ate some of them at home. So these are a wonderful muffin, and I want to thank Robert for sharing them with us today. Now those are the recipes I have to share. I hope our viewers take advantage of this wonderful fall we've had to get out and visit your local orchard, go to your farm stand, try some of the wonderful apples that are available this season. And now, back to the studio. Thank you, Deb. We'll have more apple recipes to share with you on our next recipe program coming up on Thursday, October 3rd. In the meantime, that's our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.